Hello everybody, welcome back to the Wisconsin Greg Show. I'm just getting stuff ready for winter. Um, I'm checking to see how much fuel's in my tanks, on my diesel and my gas tanks, and then I'm going to reorder some. And uh, before they come, I'm putting some uh, stuff in the diesel fuel that keeps it from gelling up. Uh, in the winter time around here, the diesel fuel gels up like, uh, kind of gets like jelly, and then it'll stop your uh, tractor or whatever you're running on diesel. Uh, because the fuel can't flow uh, through the lines because it's like jelly. So they got additives you put in the fuel and uh, I want to get that in there so when they fill it up it gets all mixed in real well. Uh, the gas is a little bit different story. It doesn't gel up but um, it will go bad over a period of time. I don't use it real fast so I'm going to put some uh, stable on it. <coughs> it's called stable. I'm sure there's other products on the market probably that do the same thing. This is just what I happen to use. Uh, this stuff here for the diesel is called, uh, made by Lucas Oil Products Incorporated. Um, and it's got a water disperse, dispersant in it, takes the water out of it. Um, now I like to fill my tanks up before uh, winter sets in because I don't want condensation happening in there. So I try to keep my tanks full of, you know, as much as I can. So I just wanted to let you know what I'm doing, getting stuff prepped for winter, and then after I leave here, I'll be going down to the pole barn and working on the truck, and I'll take you down there. Uh, I got a brake job that needs to be done on the front brakes, and uh, need to get this stuff done before winter comes because I don't want to be sitting out here in the snow uh, trying to do this stuff or have to take it in and pay for it. Uh, paid and cost me double of what it, uh, double or triple of what I can do it for myself. So I uh, just thought I'd show you what I'm up to here, and uh, if you want to watch, it's fine. <coughs> taking a rod and I want to see how much fuel's in my tank so I can, when I order it, I can give the guy kind of an idea how much fuel I need. So I only got about 14, 15 inches of diesel fuel left in here. It's not too much. Um, I need to get that filled up because I'm hopefully will be doing some plowing and, or chopping stalks before uh, winter here, hopefully, if the snow don't come too quick. Uh, but I gotta wait till they get the corn off my fields here first. Oops. What am I doing here? Can't talk and work at the same time. had diesel fuel gel up on me in the winter time when I'm trying to plow my driveway and let me tell you it's not fun. So 
I make sure I put enough stuff in there so I don't do that. Got two of these rods here. This one's wet, and I'll get another dry one here so I can see how full that gas tank is. About 21 inches of gasoline left. I don't use as much of that as I do the diesel. Some of these additives can be quite costly, but hopefully, if it uh, prevents a problem, it'll pay off. <clears throat> so I'm gonna. Give them a call now and tell them how much I got and order some fuel and diesel fuel and gasoline. And uh, next week I plan on changing these filters here to one of these tank. Uh, so that'll be all set. And I uh, won't have to worry about that. So, many, so no dirt will get into my vehicles, uh, tractors or bobcat or uh, that's about all I use it on. So, uh, but I don't want no dirt getting in there, so I want to make sure those filters are clean. So we'll change them next week. And uh, I'm going down to the pole barn to change the front brakes on my truck, and I'll meet you down there. Hello, everybody. I know it's kind of loud in here. It's going to be a little bit hard for you to hear, probably. Uh, I'm in the tractor, and I'm, uh, I was at the, my pole barn working on my truck, and I discovered I need a couple more parts that I wasn't expecting on the slide kit for the front brake job. The boots were tore on it. So I didn't want to walk home so I'm driving the tractor home and then I'm going to run to town and get the parts. Uh, I also forgot that I need a, a torque uh, socket set to get the rotors off. Uh, they put a screw in there to hold the rotors on so I got to pick that up when I'm at home. So it's uh, 39 degrees. I didn't feel like walking so I figured I'd uh, drive the tractor home. So I'll be back with you when I get back from town and uh, we'll get finishing up them brakes and I'll show you what's going on with them. Oh yeah I forgot to mention something too. I'm not um I'm not back at the pole barn yet but um as long as I'm in the tractor I wanted to show you something that happened the other day. Um I'll flip this camera around so you can see. I come in the tractor the other day, it's been sitting for, after it was sitting for quite a long time. And, uh, this was laying on the floor. This belongs right here. This spring, it just popped it right off and flew it on the floor. Nobody around, nothing broke it. It's just, uh, cheaply made. 
So now I gotta fix that. It's a real easy fix. It just comes right out and plugs in and put a new one in. But I just wanted to show you how cheap the tractors are. Uh, the tractors we had years ago, the switches lasted like almost the whole life of the tractors. Uh, but it's just unbelievable how cheap stuff is made on here. But it's an easy fix, so that's a good thing. So just wanted to show you that. So I'll meet you down at the pole barn as soon as I get the parts, and we'll be right back. You always got to take time out while you're working uh, to have a popsicle. It's always a good thing to have a popsicle. Well, I'm... I'm back. I almost got the brake job done. Look at these rotors, how terrible they are. That salt up here in Wisconsin just tears these things up. So I put some new rotors on there. These things were pretty bad. The truck has about 57,000 miles on it. And uh, it was time. You can see right here, there's just paper thin left on there of the pad. And it was just starting to hit the little squeaker right there, the thing that squeals. It was just squealing. You can see it's shiny. Uh, so I knew it was time. And replaced these rubber things to keep the water out of the slides. And uh, these are for where the pads slide. So and they were getting rusty too. The salt up here just tears this stuff up. But hopefully it'll last another six or seven years. That's about how long these lasted. So I'll show you the, the new ones. Uh, before I show you that, I'll show you my tires. They're getting some cracks in them. They're also about six or seven years old and they've got about 57, 58,000 miles on them. So I'm going to get some new tires next week. That's my plan. And, uh, and then I'll put some new wiper blades on here and I'll probably clean and adjust the rear brakes and uh, I'll be ready for ready for winter but let me move this light over here so I can show you the new pads and rotors on here ain't that pretty looks a lot better than them old ones and those pads are about two to three times thicker than those old ones so good job done all I gotta do is throw the tires back on for now and torque the wheels on and uh, this will be job this will be one more thing off my list to do so uh, I'll be back with you in just a second. I'm just out here giving her a little test drive. <clears throat> Sorry, it's a little shaky. The truck's a little bit rough. Uh, but it's uh, working good. So I uh, just wanted to thank all you for watching. And uh, hope this video gives you a little uh, idea that us farmers, we don't just sit around year long we got other stuff we got to do and uh, I'm sure all you guys and girls and stuff have things to do too so we all keep busy so just just want to, want to thank everybody for watching my videos and I hope you enjoyed this one and uh, have a wonderful day everybody we'll catch you all later bye now